The gentleman from Alexandria, Mr. Kapika. Mr. Speaker, I rise for a point of personal privilege. The gentleman has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I listened today and yesterday closely to my Republican colleagues dig in on their opposition to expanding health care to hundreds of thousands of Virginians. They've been nothing if not consistent in their talking points. Armed with not much more than rhetoric and a firm opposition to anything supported by our president, they have found a way to hold multiple conflicting opinions all at once, all in the name of denying health care for working Virginians. It was D.C. Republicans that shut down our government last fall over the same issue. Now my colleagues on the right are trying to have you believe that instead of them, it is my side that is risking a shutdown. That just doesn't square with the facts or the simple idea of compromise. The fact that the state chamber isn't on their side and has instead proposed its own approach to move forward has not stopped some in this body from disregarding all of the evidence about the jobs and economic benefits of expanding care. They have criticized the growth in Medicaid spending in Virginia while simultaneously passing a budget that adds more Medicaid waivers that serve the populations where we have seen the Medicaid growth come from. And then they call for an audit of the growth that they keep voting for by saying that we have to get our handle on that growth before we can expand care to working folks. All of this despite the fact that the area of care we are arguing about expanding uses a managed care model specifically designed to control costs as compared to the waivers which follow a much more expensive fee-for-service payment model. They have talked about the idea that the federal government isn't flexible and won't grant permission to make the Senate health care plan work, while at the same time denying the state the chance to apply for the permission and find out. We should take this opportunity to put the feds to the test instead of assuming their answers in advance. The other side has complained about the risk the feds may stop providing Medicaid funds in the future as a reason to not expand, while at the same time in their own budget voting to take new federal Medicaid funds to support new waiver slots. They have argued that taking money from schools and other needs to give to hospitals is somehow more fiscally sensible than getting Virginia tax dollars back from the federal government to support our health care deprived citizens in our suffering hospital system where one hospital has already closed. The fact that many faith leaders and organizations are not on their side has not stopped them from trying to make the claim that theirs is the humane approach to people's lives. In fact, we have heard repeatedly from the House, we've heard it today and we've heard it yesterday and we've heard it days before, that it would be cruel and mean-spirited to give people access to health care if there were any risk that, that health care might be taken away at some point in the future. Inherent in this argument is an agreement by everyone here that health care could help people have better lives that folks getting health care may enjoy it so much that they don't want to have it taken from them at some point in the future, that health security would make people in Virginia happy and give them opportunities for the future. And also inherent in this argument about taking away their health care is an explicit decision that working people don't deserve that leg up, that somehow they just don't deserve that chance to get ahead. I heard the gentleman from Colonial Heights say it would be heartless to give somebody health care and then take it away. If that is heartless, what is it to know you could give somebody care, to know you had the power to help them, and then to choose not to? What word would you use to describe that? I always come to Richmond expecting to compromise. I expect I'll have to compromise on this issue as well. I personally don't like the health care marketplace as much as other ideas. It doesn't serve as many people as I'd like, and it doesn't use the funds in the way I think they best should be used. But I don't enter any policy debate down here assuming I can get everything I want, and I don't think anyone else does either. I've enjoyed hearing the other side try to cast their unwillingness to consider any health care coverage approach as a failure by the Senate and the governor to compromise. But simply saying something over and over doesn't make it so. I and many others remain willing and open to compromise. We're waiting for the offer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.